Good afternoon and welcome to our Monday Thursday service. We will be using Divine Service Setting 3 on page 184. And if you're using the old Lutheran hymnal, that is page 15. We will begin by, by singing number 445, When You Awoke That, Christ that Thursday Morning. Beloved in the Lord, 
let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. And upon this year confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our intro is from Psalm 116. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous. Our God is merciful. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy, because he has inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous our God is merciful. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And the Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this Monday Holy Thursday is from Exodus chapter 24. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the just decrees. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve pillars, according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God, and ate, and drank. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 9. And when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the sprinkling of defiled persons with the blood of goats and bulls and with the ashes of a heifer sanctifies for the purification of the flesh, 
how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Therefore he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, since a death has occurred that redeemed them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. For where a will is involved, the death of the one who made it must be established. For a will it takes effect only at death, since it is not in force as long as the one who made it is alive. Therefore, not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood. For when every commandment of the law had been declared by Moses to all the people, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that God commanded for you. And in the same way, he sprinkled with the blood both the tent and all the vessels used in worship. Indeed, <clears throat> under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel is recorded in the Gospel of Matthew in the 26th chapter. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful, and began to say to him one after another, Is it I, Lord? And he answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who had betrayed him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? And he said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it with you anew in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We make confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue by singing him 617.
Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is from the 22nd chapter of Luke. And then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. And so Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat it. And they said to him, where will you have us prepare it? And he said to them, behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters and tell the master of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished. Prepare it there. And they went and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when the hour came, he told them, he reclined at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. This is our text. Usually, blood is not a good sign. But when Jesus and his disciples gather around the table on that Thursday before Jesus is placed on the cross, it's to celebrate an event in which blood was a very good sign. They were about to eat the feast of the Passover. Remember, the Passover was the festival when God's people gathered together to celebrate what God had done for his people long ago in Egypt. When the children of Israel were in slavery to the Egyptians for 400 years, and now God is ready to act. He tells them to eat a special meal. No bread with yeast in it. Because God is acting quickly here. And there's no time to let it rise. He is going to bring his people out of slavery. And they are to sacrifice a lamb. Because it's God that's bringing them out. And they were to put the blood of that lamb over the doorposts of their houses as a sign that that house held God's people. And later that night, when the angel of death passed through the land of Egypt, the firstborn in every household of Egypt died. But when the angel saw the sign of the blood, he passed over, sparing the sons of Israel. God's people celebrated this festival every year for over a thousand years, eating the same kind of meal. And tonight, like then, it's much the same. The day of unleavened bread has come. The Passover lamb is to be sacrificed. And so Jesus sends Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat it. And they said to him, where will, we, where will you have us prepare it? And he said, when you enter the city, a man carrying water will meet you. Follow him. Prepare it at his house. He will tell you, give you an upper room. And it was just as Jesus said. And they went and prepared the Passover, just as God's people had been doing for centuries. And yet this meal is different. At this meal, Jesus says something the world had not heard before. He took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
and likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. The disciples would be seeing a lot of blood in the next few hours. For just after, eating, <clears throat> just after eating this Passover with his disciples, Jesus takes them and goes up to the Mount of Olives, to the Garden of Gethsemane. And there Jesus prays to God the Father. And as he's praying, he's in such agony that Luke tells us that he was sweating great drops of blood. And after the men came to arrest Jesus, they began to mock him and to beat him. The disciples would again see more blood. Later, when they dragged Jesus before Herod, that thorny crown was pushed down into his head, cutting into his skin. And when the trial was over, they laid the cross on his back, which was torn by the whips and the scourges. The disciples saw the nails pierce his wrists. They saw his body pierced by a sword. The disciples saw a lot of Jesus' blood in those few hours. It was the blood that they had betrayed. It was the blood that they had sinned against. The blood we have sinned against. A scraped knee or a paper cut stings. Blood's a sign of bad news. Yet when the disciples see the blood of Jesus, they surely thought it was bad news because they failed to grasp the sign of the Passover, the sign of the blood that saved God's people from death. And only because they forgot the words Jesus himself had spoken to them that night, before they saw his blood, he said, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. When the disciples saw his blood, they were not seeing a cut from running on the playground. They were seeing this new covenant poured out for them. They were seeing something new, entirely new. And that is what we see tonight also. As we look at Jesus before Pilate, before Herod, hanging on the cross tomorrow, we see something brand new. We see in the blood of Jesus the forgiveness of sins that he won for us. No longer do people have to live in a looking forward to forgiveness of their sins to be secured. The Savior has come. He has become the sacrificial lamb. He has shed his blood so that the angel of death passes over us. He's right before our eyes. And for all the times that we gave him a reason to be nailed to the cross, he attaches his forgiveness to that holy blood of his. He invites us to the table with the disciples and says, this is my body which is given for you. This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. The same one he spoke in the beginning of all time when he said, let there be light, says, now this is for you. The one who created the fish, the birds, the stars, the planets, and the whole universe with words. The same one who stood at the wedding in Cana and changed water into finely aged wine. The one who has done such great things through words sits at the table now and says, this is my body. This is my blood. With this bread and wine, we have the body and blood of Jesus. We know it because Jesus does it. And what God says he does, he does. When you see the blood, when you hear about the wounds and the blood that he shed this week, remember, this blood is life for you. 
This blood is the forgiveness of sins we desperately need. We can have true and complete forgiveness in no other way. Because of his blood. His life blood. His forgiving blood. Given, shed for you, for me, for all people. And in this blood, we have life. Amen. <clears throat> now may the peace of God keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life.